All right, so on this job, we're going to take down this ordinary light fixture right here, and I'm going to replace it with a four-foot LED shop light going this way right here. Very easy job. It's just a matter of swapping the lights. But in addition, I want to take a wire and pull it from here and run it over here to a second box, and then that's going to power two LED shop lights, the same one as this one, that are going to run down through there. Now, these lights that I'm using can daisy chain together without visible wires, so I only need one location right here to power two lights, so that's going to be really neat. Now, I do have attic access on this job, but along the way, I'm going to give some tips and tricks on what you should do if you don't have attic access. Okay, so let's dive into it. All right, so the first thing with any electrical job that I like to do is shut off the power. And it's good practice, even though I saw the light quit, to double verify that the power is off using my non-contact voltage detector. And let's just go ahead and undo the screws and get rid of this. If you're finding any value in this video, please subscribe to this channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. So what we have here is an old work box. The old work box has the wings that kind of flip out behind the drywall to hold everything together. But this is what you're typically going to find as a new work box. If you notice, there's three different directions where the cables can come from, and then you have a flat side on one side. Now that flat side is where it nails up against your joist or your truss or whatever you've got up there. And that's how you can tell the direction of your truss. If it's this way and the flat side's going like that, then that's the direction of your joist. I have attic access, as I mentioned earlier, and it doesn't matter to me what direction the, the joists are going. But if you don't have attic access, you're going to want to know. Say if you got a light right here and you want to run a light on the other side of the garage, you can stay within that stud bay or that joist bay. And as long as you stay in there, you can get to the other light. You just can't go this way, right, across without wrecking the drywall. All right, so the next thing I'm going to want to do here is determine the location of my new junction box. I'm going to use this new Shark Tooth Smart Box right here by Southwire. This is a really cool box. It's got the teeth already on it. It's self-drilling. So what I've done is, is I've, you know, I knew I know my other light's going to go this way, and then I want to make the new row go this way. So I've measured off, you know, over 24 inches because that's where the power comes in at, is in the middle of the light. And what I've done is, is I've stuck a screwdriver up in here. Since I have attic access, I wanted to go up in the attic and see where that came out at to make sure it was clear of any wires or anything like that. You want to do the same thing. You want to make sure wherever you're cutting your hole at is going to be clear of any obstructions like that. All right, so we can pull this out. Now, one trick that I like to use is I'll hold a vacuum cleaner underneath everything to try to catch as much dust as I can. All right, so remember how I said that if you don't have an attic, you'd have to stay between the two joists and the joist bay? Well, what if your next box is five or six feet down the road there and you've got insulation here? How are you gonna feed your wire through the box and so that it keeps going down. Well, yeah, you can try to feed it back this way, but then you'll never find where the box is at. That's going to be really difficult. So if it was me, I would want to remove the box. We don't have to in this case, but if, if you do, this is your typical box, right? If you have an oscillating tool, you can stick through the drywall and cut these ears off right here and leave the nails in there and just cut the ears off on both sides and that box will come out then you can replace it with one of these types of boxes and then you're good to go, right? So that's the way that I would do that. Also, once you get the box out, you can feed one of these fiberglass rods in at a real steep angle like this. You wanna to try to stay under the insulation and feed it through, you know, all the way through. You might have to tie a couple of them together. They're like four feet long until you get to the next box. Then you'll hook your wire up down there, right? tie it on there, whatever, and then pull it back through and your wire will come out on this end. So that's how you would do that. 
But in my case, I just have to run a wire from here over to here. So that should be pretty easy, especially with an attic, right? All right, so I'm just gonna start on this end and just feed it up there. I don't need very much. So what I usually do to keep the wire from falling back out again is I will bend it like so, and that'll hold it up there. All right, so I've run this wire into the other box. There was nothing really to show. All I did was bend one of these tabs and then fed the wire through the side of the box. There's nothing to it. But let's go ahead and cut this. Now I'm using 14 gauge wire here because that's what the circuit is. This is a 15 amp circuit, so it takes 14 gauge wire. So you'll wanna make sure and use the right size wire for your application. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off right there. All right, so if you notice here, this box has a little arrow here and a little arrow here. You'll wanna line these two up with the direction that the light is gonna go. That'll offset the screw holes at about 30 degrees or whatever this is roughly, and that corresponds to what's on the bottom of the light. So I already poked out one of these guys right here so that we can feed our wire through. There we go. So roughly right there, if it's off a little bit, we can adjust it later. All right, so I've just got the box sitting up here temporarily. I had to finagle the box around to get this to sit straight on the ceiling. I'll probably take a tape measure and measure to the wall on both ends before I do my final tighten down. That way I can make sure everything is straight, okay? So let's just take that out. See, I just put the wire up inside there. So when you get the light ready, here's where the power goes through. You don't wanna just run a wire right through that. You wanna put one of these grommets in there to protect the wire. And just go ahead and peel the wire. Try and stay in the middle with your blade and keep your hand out of the way is probably a good idea. All right, now some of these lights have a removable metal thing in the middle where all the wire connections are. If that was the case with your light, then you can run your power wires right through and connect them inside the light. But this light doesn't have that, so I've run all the wires right through the grommet right there, and I'm gonna make the connections inside the box. That's gonna make it a little more difficult because I gotta hold the light up while I'm connecting it. Black to black, white to white, ground to ground. Very simple. Now you'll see how the second light hooks up here in a minute. And when I do that, I'm gonna explain how that type of connection will work on a bigger garage. Now let's go ahead and stuff our connections in the box. We'll tighten this one up. And we'll check it for straightness before I add the next light. Okay, so here we are at our primary light source. I've taken the incoming power coming in and the outgoing power going out and twisted them together and made these pigtails right here. And now I'm gonna hang the light fixture right here, just the same way I showed you hang the other one a minute ago, okay? All right, so here's my favorite part about this light. You can put them together without any visible wires. There's a female connector and there's a male connector. And all you do, this side's male, this side's female. You take the little plug out right here and you take this little through connector right here, just put that in there. Just like so. Now I've already marked this and put my anchors in the ceiling here where they should be for this. That way I don't have to stand here and fiddle and fumble around with it trying to get it to work. Just put them together like that, push them together. And I'll go ahead and put my screws in. You gotta be ready. That way you don't have to let it go because it's not gonna hang off of the connector. Now I'll just put the diffusers in and we'll be done. The coolest thing I like about this is, is you can connect eight fixtures together or up to eight, right? So if you had a limited garage where you could just go down the middle, you know, like if your original light was in the middle and you could keep with that middle bay all the way down, you can run your wire down the middle of the garage or wherever your light is, whatever bay, you know, and you can take one of these and turn them this way. That way you can cut across the studs and you can put one and then two, three, however wide your garage is up to eight fixtures and just keep on going. So you could come down, you can make three rows of 
of eight, whatever, you know, 24 lights just by putting up three boxes. Oh yeah, we got some light now, working like a champ. All right, if you have any questions, comment below. I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching.